Well, good morning, church. Good morning. I'm so glad the Spirit that all of you are here with us today to worship, to pray, to sing, to lament. I am the Reverend Shannon Garadegi. I serve here as the Senior Minister of Smithville UCC. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, if you look in your bulletin, you see you have a little uh, flyer for the Linton Soup uh, Study Series. So I encourage you to come on out for that on Tuesday nights. Uh, you can email me for more information. Uh, there is a copy of the devotion that we're using on the table at the back. So I encourage you to take a look at that if you're interested in joining us for soup and good conversation. Also want to mention, this is intergenerational, so bring your kids, bring your teenagers. I tricked my 18-year-old into leading uh, the youth portion of the study. Um, so um, <laughs> we have something for everybody. So I encourage you to come on out and um, have some soup and uh, get into the study together. Also want to mention that coming up this Wednesday, we are already at Ash Wednesday. Uh, so between the hours of 12 and 1, I'll be on the stairs in front of the church offering ashes to go if anyone is downtown. Uh, there will also be an additional service at 7 p.m., uh, more of a traditional, well, I shouldn't say a traditional um, worship service, uh, but we will have, um, it's an interactive service with prayer stations, and there's play no involved, if that's your thing. Uh, so I do encourage you to come on out for that worship service as well. Again, that is Wednesday um, at 7. She ran about 45 minutes, but um, I invite you to come on out. Um, those are all of my announcements. Does anyone else have any announcements? No, let us continue to worship God. Hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Hush. Denmark Bessie, Harriet Tubman, Soldier Truth, Jarena Lee, W.E.B. Dubois, Thurgood Marshall, Martin Luther King Jr., Ida B. Wells, Fanny Mae Hamer, and Ella Baker. These and more represent the great cloud of witnesses 
Their spirits linger with us, creating new generations of warriors, of preachers, prophets, teachers, activists, organizers, mothers, fathers, sons, daughters, and siblings of the African diaspora. People of God, amen. Ashe and amen. After this sentence, there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the land, robed with palm branches in their hands. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Ashe and Amen. scholars and activists, and also queer. 
Audrey Lord, and Angela Davis. Join me in the confession printed in your bulletin. Great and gracious God, in order for us to be whole, we know we must recognize the despair that plants in each of us. That thin, persistent voice that says our efforts are useless, it will never change. So why bother accepting it? Forgive us when we follow this voice. Help us to ignore this voice and grant us the clarity to hear your voice louder and clearer. Family, it is easy to feel discouraged and let go. But in the words of Angela Davis, if we take a step back and reflect on what is happening all over the world and the history of struggle, the history of solidarity movements, it becomes clear, even obvious, that seemingly indestructible forces can be Thanks to the power of the people, they can be easily broken. Family, there is only one indestructible force, and that is the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God forgives and lives in each of us. Let us live into this indestructible truth. Amen. Before we hear our scripture reading, let us hear these words of illumination. Speak to us, O Lord, our God, and let the fire of your spirit burn brightly in our hearts. Open our minds to receive the wisdom of the law, the hope of the prophets, and the life of the gospel. Jesus Christ, your living word. Amen. Please join us in our next hymn, number 490. I want Jesus to go.
Mark 9, verses 2 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could reach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down from the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Word of the Lord.
First day we meet Jesus and Peter and James and John on a mighty mountain. And soon we meet Elijah and Moses on that same, on that same mountain. And though it should not surprise us that it is a mountain that this holy moment takes place, because we know from the Hebrew scriptures, mountains are places of divine disclosure, especially in the story of Moses. Even some anthropologists proclaim that mountains are the meeting place between heaven and earth. In fact, when Jesus is born, it is the African-American spiritual that tells us to go tell it on the mountain. The earliest version of this spiritual comes from the oral tradition, which means enslaved Africans sang about the same this song through work and fields. And even though they were down low, they sang despite their chains. See, they knew they were not property. They knew they were a people. In fact, they knew they were more than a people. They knew they were God's people. And they too could be transfigured, transformed, made new, dazzling, shining bright like diamonds in the sky once they got to that mountain high. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and everywhere, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Because Jesus is born, we too can make it up that mountain. We too can be transfigured because mountains are the meeting place of heaven and earth. Reverend King knew this. In one of his most famous speeches, he speaks of being at the mountaintop. And he too is transfigured. And like Jesus, King knew he was not going to be here long, but he had a holy encounter on the mountain. King writes, I've been to the mountaintop, and I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. I look over and I've seen the promised land. Now I may not get there with you, but I want you to know that we as a people will get to that promised land. So Reverend King knew that African Americans were people, but more than a people. Reverend King knew that the civil rights movement wasn't just about freeing black people. It was about all of us. We can all be transfigured, transformed, made new, dazzling, shining, like diamonds in the sky once we get to that mountain high. So here we are in Mark. We are gathered on this holy mountain. And Jesus Christ is not only born, but transfigured. Jesus Christ is transformed. He goes up that mountain one way, but he comes down a different way. It is written that his clothes became dazzling white. It is written that he shined bright like diamonds. Then a cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. In many ways, the Gospel of Mark is about identity. Jesus famously asked Peter, Who do you say that I am? Also throughout this book, Jesus instructs those who witness his power, his authority, his divinity to tell no one about me. As they were coming down that mountain, he orders the disciples to tell no one about what they had seen until after he is resurrected. Now scholars refer to this as the messianic secret. 
but arguably it was the worst kept secret. And it is debated when in fact Jesus knew who he is or was. But it is clear that something spiritual and something beautiful happens on mountaintops. Something about identity and belonging. Something about God and glory. Something about dazzling and shining like diamonds in the sky. God says, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. God is claiming him. God is affirming him. God is declaring him. This Mark reading is set on a mountain. The song, Go Tell It On The Mountain. And in King's speech, I've been to the mountaintop. These words encourage us to look up. The words encourage us to go up. These words motivate us to reform so we can be transformed. I'll say it again. These words motivate us to reform so we can be transformed. These words motivate us to move from dull to dazzling. It's about identity and belonging. What does it mean for us on the corner of Smithfield to be transfigured and transformed? How can we shine bright, dazzling light like diamonds in the sky? Or in our case, on the corner, who are we? What is our identity? What does it mean to belong to this church, this denomination, this city? What here needs to be made new? How are we going to get up that mountain? And who are we taking with us? In Alice Walker's book, A Search for Our Mother's Gardens, you probably know her name from The Color Purple. She's the author of, of that book. But Walker writes, part of what existence means to me is knowing the difference between what I am now and what I was then. It means being awake to protect myself and the ones I love. It means being a part of the world community and being alert to which part that I have joined and knowing how to change another part if it no longer suits me. To know is to exist. To exist is to be involved, to move about, to see the world with my own eyes. So family, this is my invitation to you to exist, to be involved, to make that journey up that mountain, to hear what God has to say to you. Because right now, today, this moment, this is our opportunity to be transfigured, to be transformed, to be made new, to shine bright, dazzling light, like diamonds in the sky. Because mountains are the meeting place between heaven and earth. And as the enslaved sang out about Jesus' birth, it's about identity. See, they knew, they knew their worth. Reverend King had been to that mountaintop and he knew his time was limited, but his faith in Jesus was limitless. His love of liberation and light, he would not be overcome by darkness. So he went up to that mountain, empowered by the Holy Spirit, in search for freedom. And who was he taking with him? Everyone. In another excerpt from Alice Walker's book, In Search of Our Mother's Gardens, which is a collection of, of prose, uh, fictionized, it's fiction, a young enslaved girl, she is seeking to understand belonging and identity. She asks her mother an intriguing question. Mama, why are we brown and pink and yellow and our cousins are beige and white and black? The mother answers. Well, you know this race, we're all colored. Just like a flower in the garden with every color flower represented. And then as this young girl turns to, turns to a woman, she says to her mother, Mama, I'm walking to Canada. 
and I'm taking you and a bunch of other slaves with me. The mother replies, well, it wouldn't be the first time. This girl turned into a woman. This girl turned woman like King, like Jesus. They all had been to this mountaintop. And I want all of us to know that we too are a part of this promise. We too are a part of this people. In fact, we too are more than a people. We are God's people. We too can be transfigured, transformed, made new, shining like diamonds in the sky once we get to that mountain high. Because mountains are the meeting place between heaven and earth. No matter what the world tries to tell you about who you are or what you are, you must know your worth. Who are we? What is our identity? What does it mean to belong to this church, this denomination, this city? What here needs to be made new? And how are we going to get to the top of that mountain? These answers are complicated, maybe even a little bit scary. But that's the nature of mountain climbing. It's a little bit scary. How are we going to get to the top of that mountain? The answer is together. One step, one prayer at a time. Amen.
it is now time that we pray together. Please join me in a posture of prayer. Spirit of abundance, God of grace, mother of hope, we pause now to remember those whose stories are all around us, but so often passed over. Those stories that when are told remind us of who we are and where we come from. This month in our nation, we celebrate Black History Month. Help us to realize that Black history is all of our histories. May the day come when these stories are so wildly taught that there is no need for them to be taught separately. We know this day will not come until we as a people make different choices. And here and now we pray for those new choices. And we come to see a day where the prison system becomes redemptive, not punitive. A day where the legal system learns to focus more squarely on the facts, not the colors of our skin or our backgrounds. A day where all our schools are fully funded as needs demand. May our role models be allowed to excel when they thrive and not be taken down due to their rich heritage. We know this will require a shift in power and this can be scary for some. Give those full of fear hope. May we come to know your grace so that our hearts will not be hardened to the pain around us. There are so many needing beautiful stories to be told and the opportunity to create those beautiful stories. And we need a chance to hear them and share in those beautiful stories. Widen our vision so that our history is shared this month and every month. Come to be known as our history too. We are the most human when we see the humanity in others. Holy One on this day, make us ready for the day when the world is transfigured, transformed and made new. When all the things around us will shine in the dazzling light of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now with one voice, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples saying, Our God in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I now invite you to join me, read responsibly, on the split name from the Black Imagination, printed in your bulletin. I pray for a world where I am safe, valued and loved, a world filled with youth who ask questions that adults have no fear to answer. Elders will support the weekend to captive audience, where an entire community shares stories to make with I travel with those I love to experience love in new places. I have a network of people I care for and who care for me. We work and play together. We share love and peace. My grandmother doesn't worry when I leave her home after sundown. There is a relaxed nature about public transportation. People in our community ask for directions, advice, and whistles. There are images, statues, stories written, told, and retold about my ancestors and their contributions to humanity. There is a weekly celebration for small victories, mine or someone else's. Conversations are bad and 
There is no one way to be or see anything. Amen. We will now transition into the offering. The God who speaks and summons the earth into being now speaks to us, calling us to offer up our lives as a sacrifice of praise. Please give up your time, your treasures, and talents. We will now accept the offering. Thank you. 
sisters and siblings, now go and tell the good news. The Lord of light and light is with us. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Amen. The very face of God shines upon you with beauty, blessing, and peace. Hallelujah. Now go out and change the world. Mm -hmm.